On behalf of the Parks and Rec Commission members, I'm calling the meeting to order. These are truly exciting times, and we welcome all our distinguished guests. So thank you for coming. With that, I'll turn it over to the Honorable Mayor. Well, I'll declare this meeting of Hickory City Council open, and we have a board, so we can conduct any business that comes before this meeting that doesn't require previous advertising. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Thank you, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, today, uh, both, both bodies will be uh, receiving a presentation on uh, proposed improvements uh, that are being proposed to plan the road of the Gotham Park in partnership uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the Robert Lackey family. And, and from a staff standpoint, we're excited to be here with, with where we always spend a lot of time with staff and Mr. Lackey and, and, and his family working uh, uh, bring us to this, to this point. And just before I turn it over to, to Mr. Lackey uh, for any comments, would you like to, to, to kind of process that, you know, what, what we want to see the outcome uh, will be, what, what we're presenting to both uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission and City Council is the, the conceptual site, the final conceptual site plan for the proposed improvements at, at Guyton Rotary Park. And once, those, uh, once those plans are presented to you, and I'll let Mr. Lackey introduce uh, Tom Walsh, who is who's the, uh, Mr. Lackey's uh, art, legacy of architectural plan. Once, once Tom goes through those, goes through the conceptual plans, at that time, once he finishes, there'll be the opportunity to ask any questions. Once that's, once that's done, what staff will ask of the Parks and Recreation Commission is for your consideration of the conceptual site plan as, as presented. So staff will ask you, you know, for a rec recommendation, pending your approval of that recommendation to Hickers to the city council to them for their consideration and acceptance of the site plan today. The acceptance uh, by both the Parks and Recreation Commission and city council is required for uh, you know, the, the work to begin on that. After that's done, then I'll turn the meeting over to our deputy city attorney on the do it. So there's some agreements that staff we've been working on staff and, and the Lackey families and agreements to bring everything together. There'll be no decision made on those. Those will come back at a later time. But we felt while we had both bodies together, we needed just to, on a broad range, just to share share with you what how those agreements uh, look. So that's basically what the, what the meeting uh, is involved today. So with that being said, it is my esteemed honor to, I know, uh, Rob Lake, Mr. Lack and Rob have been here before here year about 18 months ago presenting their vision and their vision is slowly starting to uh, has developed to this point where they wanted to come back and, and present that to you. So with that I'll talk and uh, like to introduce to you Robert Black and Mr. Lack and forward your open call. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My voice is a little weak with all the power and stuff, so here we go. And thank you very much, uh, everyone, for allowing us to come to speak this evening as a minister of the joint body. And we have had an exciting 18 months since we came last time. I think we had a little sketch about this big. <laughs> we said, we're going to go park, we think. <laughs> and uh, since that time, we have all worked very hard. The city's been great. Our need is driving us all crazy with all the provisions. <laughs> in fact, you can spend three hours reading the contract to all of y'all this afternoon. That's what I heard. <laughs> no, she's not. But no, it's been a great process. And Tom is very Tom also through TSW out of Atlanta has been an excellent firm to work with on design, concept, and engineering, preliminary engineering for the park and costing and things like that. So we're very pleased to have him today to make a little more formal presentation of the concepts where they are today and talk a little bit about where that process will lead us in the future. But uh, it has been a very tedious uh, uh, design process and 
we, we've had to learn all about conservancies and how to run the park and how to, in conjunction with the city, become partners long term to continue to grow the park over the years to come. And we feel like we have some great plans to do that. Obviously, very excited about the integration of the new city wall uh, initiative and how that's going to tie into more beautification of that area of our town. We're very excited about it. So, any questions you folks have uh, before or after, please feel free to contact us. We'd be happy to answer any questions that we possibly can. But we're feeling really great about where we have to go. Very, very, very good. Thank you very much for giving us the time and energy. Uh, Max Group and Marnita, very, very diligent hard work and a very good process. We all got along really great. And Marnita said she's going to get me the check this afternoon. That is part of the deal, right? I'll <laughs> leave that out again. <laughs> but anyway, we'll definitely uh, hear more about it here. Tom Walsh uh, from TSW out of Atlanta. Excellent design. Amazing job. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to make you all feel comfortable right off. I'm this August I turned 65, and so I just did the math, and I want you to know that I'm four. I, Four percent of my life, I lived in North Carolina. I was I started first grade in North Carolina in camp was June, and then finished fourth grade in uh, Cherry Point. So you know what I was? I was a, a military brat, but uh, loved North Carolina. Had a great time. Or at least the memories that I have of North Carolina were great. And then went over to the next state to South Carolina. So I was only there for half a percent. So I'm more North Carolinian than South Carolinian. Um, also, one of, the, one of the things that I'm so excited about this park, my life as a professional started in San Antonio, Texas with one of the great architects of the last century, O'Neill Ford. And O'Neill Ford was a regionalist. And he believed in 1975, he believed that we should design with the materials that were available to us. Now that's a big deal today, but back in 1975, we were going through this environmental movement, but this was something that Mr. Ford had practiced since he had started architecture back in the, uh, uh, I guess in the 30s at, at the time. So he was, he was a great influence. As a matter of fact, he was my mentor for six, for six years. And he really taught us how to lay the architecture and the landscape architecture on the land lightly and to be very sensitive to the land because it was the most important asset that we're doing. And I can remember, he says, some of these developers make me crazy because they see this extraordinarily beautiful piece of land, and they chop all the trees down, and they say, now make it beautiful. Well, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to save it. So when we saw this, this park, it was just extraordinary. It's a beautiful piece of land, and, and you all have something very much to be proud of, and having that lake view and, and the lake uh, frontage. So when we started off this project, we met with the, the Lackey family. We, we went through a sort of a formal process of being selected, and we were fortunate to be selected. and then. From that point, we met with all of the city staff and other uh, officials. I think we met with the power companies and other companies so we could understand uh, the nature of the project. So we really got ourselves into uh, uh, the land. So I've spent four or five times at the site. One day we came over here and sat at the picnic table and just designed for about four or five hours, uh, another gentleman and I. So uh, the, the piece of land that we're looking at is basically right here for the park. And then this is called the buffer piece, which the city will uh, control uh, from that point. So this is about, uh, of the uh, right now, this is approximately, we have approximately 106 acres here that we've calculated. Uh, this is about 30 acres, and the rest is about 60 some acres uh, plus. So it adds up to about 106 acres. Uh, we've divided this into uh, four zones. And it really, it was basically to look at uh, these different zones uh, and then look at the future expansion. And I'm going to get into these zones in a few minutes. And then the land that's not available at the moment, uh, which is uh, controlled by the city. I'm going to tell you now, we're looking north. I'm going to confuse you, and I'm going to turn the plans in a few minutes. So it's going to be facing west, but I'll take when we get there. So sorry, it's just for the present. Oh, we just got there. This, this is now. Uh, Web north is over here, so this is north, uh, east, west at the top. So um, basically, you come up on 12th Street, and we have the existing entry uh, located here, 
And one of the one of the main criteria was ultimately to add as much parking as we could add to this. There's currently about 40 spaces. We wanted to get uh, as many as 130, and with valet parking, 160, 170 cars. So if an event occurs, you can park it within uh, the site. So uh, we looked at this area. We, we came up with a, a canoe and kayak uh, dock with motorboats that can park here, but it's only a launch for canoe and kayaks. And I was fortunate to design the kayak canoe venue for the Olympics in '96, and I just finished a $40 million growing venue in Sarasota, Florida. So. This, this, this is a, a nice little uh, piece that people can just drop their boats in and uh, use the lake. Uh, the other, other cool thing about this side is that you have this wonderful stream uh, that comes down uh, and runs parallel uh, to 12. And one of the, the thought processes we went through this design is you have this high point, all the water's coming down through here, and ultimately it ends back in uh, Hickory Lake. And at the point it's closed here, there's, this is a closed ditch at this point. And the thought process was, boy, this could be a teaching moment for uh, a lot of the children that come here because we could show them how water filters from the high point down into the small uh, bio, bio stream, and then how water filters through and then enters. And we, gave up, we decided we try to daylight this into back in the, uh, uh, the lake. So to me, it's a, a great teaching moment. It's a wonderful way to see how ecology uh, uh, works. So we wanted to think about, let's, let's show this, how this all works from a, a green standpoint. So we have this, uh, an, an exit now, and we have 21 spaces. We then had a larger uh, for uh, overflow parking. So the, the parking actually is, is uh, some sort of grass, uh, reinforced grass, and we have another 55 there. And then we have about, actually that, that 37 is off, but we have about 45 spaces located in the main parking that has a drop off for what we're calling the lake house and then the conservancy, and I'll talk about that in a minute, as at the high point of this part of the site. There's other higher points, but this is one of the high points, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But the lake house where the existing building is basically right now. We have the existing pass system that we're gonna plug into that starts at the lake house. And then I think what we really, uh, another exciting moment here is how do we get from the lake house up to the conservancy? So we have an elevator, but we also have a canopy walk that you'll see a, 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 a sketch of in a second that goes to the conservancy and back. So uh, it's, a, it's a very compact uh, uh, site uh, with one more, one more element, I'm sorry. The, we have um, the family shelter pl uh, playground located here. So we have three types of docks. We have a boat dock, we have a fishing dock, and this is really an event dock that I'm going to, again, talk about in a couple seconds as we go further into the, the site. So again, we broke this into four zones, and basically we broke into zones as really for a pricing exercise that we went through. We wanted to see what the cost of all of me uh, might be, and i got to tell you that it's very early stages. It's hard to cost up in a conceptual stage, but we tried to you know, do our best, so we use this as a, a method to do that. This is a perspective uh, looking from the lake back to the lake house, uh, the, the amphitheater that we have with the event dock, the conservancy at the high point, uh, the bridge that comes in and connects into it. And you can get uh, through these, we, we walk this a number of times through these little wonderful trails that can get you back up uh, to this point. There's a, a phenomenal swale that comes down through here. Again, another teaching moment, how, what lives in these swales. That is so, it's so neat to, uh, to have that, that uh, adjacency with the conservancy and then all the parking and so forth. One of the things I always try to do is when I think about parks is you come and park because in this case, this park is more a vehicular. You have to go in a car. But once you get out of the car, you want the pedestrian to be free of that. And so that's what we really tried to work on is once you get out of the car, you're now in the park and enjoy the park uh, amenities. So we're gonna look at, quickly look at three different areas uh, on this. Oops, there's a red button. So this is uh, the kayak and canoe uh, uh, parking lot. And what it does is it has about 21 spaces, I think I, I just said, and then off of 12th Street. And then you have a nice little bridge, and we have the bio swale in this opening back up into uh, Hickory Lake. Right now it's covered with a, a pipe, so really give much more of a natural feel to the whole area. And so you can walk across this bridge over to the family uh, picnic area and playground, as well as boat docks. So this is, basically for, for day use for the, the kayakers 
and then at night, and if there's an event, this could be used probably more for uh, the ballet party. Then you have that middle area, which is the playground. Uh, you have a, a sort of a boardwalk right along uh, the edge of the lake here. You have the fishing dock. You have the play area. You have some outdoor restrooms located here, and then you have um, uh, the, the main grand entry into the lake house right here. Just, just as an off note, I was in um, uh, Sulphur Springs, Texas uh, last week in um, this town, this, this is an amazing story of what they were seven years ago, what they're today. But they become very famous because they have two outdoor glass bathrooms. And uh, you can't see in, but you can see out. And so I have all these special people trying to look in. And they've been on national, worldwide TV. They got these things made out of Germany. And the only mistake they made when they first put them in is that at night, when you turn the lights on the inside, uh-oh, you could see inside, but you could see out. So they had to put lights on the outside. But <laughs> they caught them off guard, these, these Texans. But it, it was a wonderful, wonderful little thing. Uh, so um, the, the, the lake house, I'm going to get into more detail about the lake house. But what we really wanted to do was have a formal uh, processional uh, entry into it. Uh, and you'll see in the images, one of the things that we really, really focused on was indoor-outdoor relationship, making this as transparent so you could use uh, both spaces and they'd feel as comfortable together. So you'll see that in a second, and we, we, this, this building is just full of light. And then we have a small amphitheater with a, uh, a, a, an event uh, dock out here. We did this, I've, I've been working on Piedmont Park in Atlanta for <coughs> 1993, and this is a much larger dock than they have for event dock, and they've had weddings and they've had Shakespeare plays on it, so we're very comfortable that this could work, and it would have all sort of electrical hookups and all the things that you need for an event. You actually could have a backstage back here uh, for dressing rooms and so forth, and it's all temporary stuff that you use to put up. So this is the first image that we had drawn of the, uh, the lake house with the elevator uh, and stairs going up to the uh, canopy bridge. And the canopy bridge, again, it's all about the ecosystem. Now you, you go up and you're in the canopies of trees, and there's a lot to learn about what life uh, exists up there, uh, natural uh, life. So I think it's kind of cool that we can show all these, uh, the, the water all the way up to the, to the uh, canopies of the trees. Um, one of the things we, we would love to see is some cisterns. Uh, so again, we're capturing water uh, and maybe reusing it for, uh, for um, irrigation if we wanted to use that, but we're using it naturally again. Um, all sorts of things we're thinking. But you can see that this is all a lot of glass here. So, and you can see right through to the other side, which is the, uh, the back patio. So that's, this is the, if we're just looking at this side, we're looking through. We have a large meeting room a small meeting room, and a warming kitchen. It's not a full kitchen, it's just a warming kitchen for uh, catering and so forth, uh, with restrooms and office. And what I'm, I, I think Jerry Spangler, my partner, uh, designed this, and what he, I think he's done a great job. And then he has this wonderful event space that we can open out to, and so those rooms, that, in that outdoor, uh, indoor relationship, they can just fill out onto this patio looking down onto the uh, uh, event space. And this is some images of it. This is a, a day shot, and that's the night shot. But uh, what, what I really like about this too is that it, instead of this canopy going down, it comes up. It just invites you into the space. And again, we're we're thinking about using all natural materials uh, for this. Uh, if there's indigenous stone, again, we we not had time to research that, but if, if there was indigenous stone in this area, that'd be great to use uh, woods and so forth uh, for this. Um, building. Uh, the Conservancy, which is uh, again one of the high points, uh, great views out over uh, the lake. Uh, the swale that I was talking about occurs over here and drops off. There's a, there's a fairly significant drop off at this point, so uh, you, can, you can access it. And uh, every once in a while we might need cars up there, so we have this little turnaround and the turnaround at the other point with reinforced edging. Um, grass edging, just as, as we have in the uh, overflow parking. And then we have two outdoor spaces, uh, uh, one a small observational deck looking out of the lake and then this, this other uh, patio area. And again, this is sort of coming from the canopy bridge 
over to the lake. And again, we're using that same type of roofing structure that invites you into the space and complements the building at, 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 at the lower uh, end. And again, this is basically outdoor. The conservancy is on the inside, the outdoor patio, and then this, this deck over looking at. So that's sort of the entry from uh, the, good gracious, the west side, I think. Oh, it's outside, say so there it is. And then this is the back side, and this actually falls off a little more steeper. Uh, we, did, we didn't get that into this, this sketch, but uh, you can see that's observation deck, and then this is glass and surface uh, located right here. So finally, uh, the schedule that we're looking at is Hopefully sometime this summer we get to get started on the, the, the project and then at that point we're looking at about a month uh, with master plan and schematic design finishing up, going into design development about three months, uh, construction documents three months, and hopefully uh, if, if, if the, this is a fairly aggressive schedule we could be uh, finished or a lot of this project could be finished by 17. So that's it. Uh, is, are we supposed to ask for questions? Yes, sure. Any questions? Well, first, thank you. Uh, well, what is the capacity of some of those uh, meetings? Oh. See, I, I was doing my homework, but I probably didn't do my homework. Let me go back and see what. Is the uh, a hundred? This is a this is a hundred seats right here. The small is uh, 20, 20 to twenty five seats, and the uh, patio is a hundred seats. So you could get as many as three hundred people in, into the, into this, this space right here. Was there any thought of having outdoor events? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, let me go back to the... Yeah, this, this was, the, the whole thought process was that, uh, again, talking about that indoor-outdoor relationship, that this is the outdoor patio. We have this amphitheater, so you can have this, and then you have this staging area. And they really, when you when you're on the front side of this building, uh, right here, and you look through, you can see all the way down. This because this is a very transparent building on on this side of the building, so it really is uh, a, a very special area that you could have and utilize this whole space for a special event. Again, what what is the capacity of sitting capacity? About about three hundred sitting. Oh, the amphitheater. That's the oh the oh the amphitheater. The building and patio covered patio about three hundred, and that's with banquet style seating. That's not like we're doing here like. Or just chairs on the wedding and you set up. It, it would probably totally accommodate five hundred people there. And the amphitheater is about four hundred five hundred people. Yeah. Any other questions for Paul? Thank you so much.
Any opposed? Second Unanimous. Second Unanimous. I would now uh, ask if uh, City Council, or someone from City Council, would like to make a motion or institute discussion of this matter. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Motion by Patton, second by Meisner. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That's unanimous. Mr. Zager Rowley and Mr. Lale are not present. As I stated earlier, And so it would take a long time to go through word by word. So I want to just give you a broad overview. First of all, there will be a grant construction easement agreement, which will, of course, govern the development and construction of the park. And the purpose of it, of course, is to memorialize Mr. Lackey's late wine, Deidre Lackey. Here are the areas, over the basic areas that the agreement will cover. Of course, there will be an overview of the project. Then the agreement would outline or set out the responsibilities and rights and obligations of both parties, the city as well as the developer, Mr. Lackey. Finally, uh, the last two discusses the facilities ownership. The city, of course, owns the property and will own the facilities as they're being constructed. And last, of course, we have to set out as I think Matt refers to it as the legal mumbo jumbo, or is it going legal? <laughs> Bonds and insurance, you know, those little technicalities as to how is this property going to be protected, how is it insured, that kind of thing. So that is one of the, the agreements that we have been working on. The second one, the conservancy, I think you've heard Mr. Lackey as well as Mr. Walsh. Walsh. Oh, you're Rob Lackey family, also known as Tom Walsh. Um, refer to the conservancy very briefly. And just to make a distinction, there's a difference between the conservancy and the conservatory. The conservatory is the building. The conservancy is actually going to be a nonprofit group that will be created that will help operate and manage and maintain the facilities that are constructed. And this is a, a, again, a partnership. Um, this agreement covers the creation of conservancy. The group will be formed and it will have a board of directors with representatives from both parties, meaning some city representatives appointed by city council 
and also representatives that will be initially selected by Mr. Lackey, the Lackey family. It also covers the development of the gardens, and the gardens includes the facilities that were discussed and presented to you, as well as the landscaped areas. That whole thing is referred to as the gardens. It also talks about the adjacent park areas and any future expansion of the project. Uh, there was a reference to the buffer area, the expansion area. And so the agreement touches upon that and gives direction and provisions which will allow for future expansion. And finally, the term of the agreement, basically how long is it going to last? What is the length of the agreement? And finally, we're also working on a burial site agreement. As Darwin has stated, the purpose of, this, of the gardens in the park is to memorialize uh, Mrs. Lackey. And therefore, there will be uh, a burial agreement which will govern the construction of burial sites. The majority of those sites will be located inside the conservatory, um, and some aid will be located in certain adjacent garden areas. Those sites will be for the use of the extended Lackey family. Next steps. This just boils it down. You've already seen a proposed timeline for the construction. And these are some of the next steps that we are looking to follow. Of course, we're agreeing upon the language. I think we're almost there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a train. It's really light. And of course, the creation of the conservancy and, have, and the board members will be appointed. The engineering documents will, of course, be prepared or will be prepared and submitted for a review and approval. Execution of the agreements, and then of course construction begins. And so again, this is a very exciting process, and we've all worked very long and hard. Staff, uh, as well as the Lackey family and all of his uh, representatives, the architects and others, to try to create something wonderful. And again, that will capture all that the project is meant to be. Put it in pa on paper in writing. I will entertain any questions you may have about any of the agreements or anything in general about the agreements. <coughs> will the CA maintain the burial site? <coughs> like having the regular cemeteries, or is it going to be like different? No, they will be maintained in accordance with our, the rules and regulations um, uh, as with other cemeteries. And of course, as I said, with them being located in the building, that encompasses part of the maintenance of the building. Well, any other questions? Just, just a <coughs> comment in terms of next steps. So, from a staff level, we've anticipated uh, um, either either at a city council meeting or at a separate workshop, actually going through the agreements with you all. We recognize that this joint meeting wasn't the appropriate place to turn pages and go line by line, <coughs> but uh, we did want to provide council that opportunity to, to look at all the agreements. And as Mr. Stewart mentioned, they're not completely done yet um, because it, it has gotten very complex. It's been 18 months of almost weekly conversations with, with Mr. Black and his attorney, and uh, but we think for now, as she mentioned, we're in the short rows. And, but just want to make sure council understood we're not going to bring these agreements to you next for action until you've had a chance to really look at them and go through them. And uh, she can go in much more detail and explain. We will have a public hearing for public input before approving the contract. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other questions? I don't have any questions, but I think it's very exciting. This is kind of like a spark that's going to ignite the whole bond referendum. Of what we're trying to do here in so, the, the timing is pretty good. Yeah, that's so time. We are working somewhat slowly by many people's standards on the bond, uh, the bond proceeds of uh, use, but this will take place during the time that that's going on. So uh, I, I, I think people will be very interested in this, and I hope we can have. Uh, an out of the way place that doesn't interfere with construction can have something, some of these on display for the sidewalk superintendents. Mm -hmm. All of our quality control engineers.
40,000. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir